and they will be going live. And I once again appeal to all to utilize this opportunity of this national webinar on national important subject. Thank you, one and all. So thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, introductory remarks and addressing the gathering. So uh, we are very much delighted to uh, conduct the webinar actually in two days. Uh, with the most experienced uh, faculty members of uh, Acharya Injirang Agriculture University as well as CFTRI Mysore. So today, uh, actually, uh, uh, I'm uh, very much delighted to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, S. Kalimullah, sir, who is the senior most professor of Acharya Injirang Agriculture University, uh, working at uh, Regional Agriculture Research Station, Tirupati. So coming to the uh, introduction of the speaker, actually, Sar has did uh, uh, his uh, BE Agriculture in uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, Coimbatore, then uh, MTech in post harvest engineering from IIT, Karakpur, and then PhD from TNU, Coimbatore. Uh, he is a fellow of Institution of Engineers and a fellow of uh, Indian Society of Agricultural uh, Engineers. Uh, right now, he is working as a principal scientist and head of post harvest engineering and technology center, Tirupati. Uh, and earlier, uh, he has worked in uh, so many uh, places in uh, different levels and uh, he has worked as associate dean of uh, College of Food Science and Technology uh, at Pulvendala of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, also, uh, he is uh, also he was also the member of uh, Board of Studies of Agriculture Engineering for three universities and external examiner for seven universities in the country. Dr. S. Kalimullah sir has uh, published uh, forty-one research articles in international and national journals, then forty-seven popular articles in various journals and magazines, and gave fourteen radio talks. He is having two patents in his credit, and uh, he is also a reviewer of uh, eleven scientific journals, both national and international level. Uh, the number of citations of his uh, research uh, research articles is uh, thousand eighty six. He handled six projects worth rupees uh, two hundred and thirty four lakhs, and uh, he has also guided uh, in the teaching side. He has also guided one PhD student and two MTech students also. He is a recipient of Rashtriya Ratna Award of Indian International Society, then Distinguished Service Certificate of Indian Society of Agriculture Engineering, Engineers, then Innovative Potential Students Project Award of Indian National Academy of Engineering, then Commendation Medal of Indian Society of Agriculture Engineering, Meritorious Teacher Award of Acharya Engineering Agriculture University, Eminent Engineer Award of the Institution of Engineers, then IACAE, JEE, Best Review. Best Reviewer Award 2019 of ISA. So, so much of contribution to the society, uh, to the farming community, as well as the students. Uh, so, we are very much uh, happy to have you here, sir. Now it is over to you, sir. Yes, sir, your screen is visible, sir. And thank you, Bala. Sir. Uh, respected uh, Associate Director of Research, Dr. Rashekar, sir. Uh, Dr. Bala Hussain Reddy, CEO of Wangru Potion Incubator. Scientists, professors, engineers, entrepreneurs, and midday students. Good morning to everybody. I am going to deliver a lecture on an uh, overview of post harvest technology and machinery. As uh, our associate director of research has told that a lot of uh, uh, fruits and vegetables are wasted uh, due to improper post harvest storage structures. And here I am going to give a, an overview about the post harvest technology and the machinery. And before giving that one, uh, let me tell why we had to give a lot of importance to this post-harvest technology. 
And here, if you see what is food security, the food security means when all the people at all the times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food. That is, uh, all the people should get the proper nutritious food uh, that it is called as a food security. And here, if you see in the whole world, nearly one in seven people are hungry and we are wasting nearly one third of the food. And if you'll see that in the whole world, during every 3.6 seconds, a person is dying due to hunger. And among it, nearly 75% people are only the children. And here you can see three photographs. And then you can see in the first photograph, one gentleman is uh, eating more. In the second photograph, you can see that small children, they could be able to get some food and they are eating it. And whereas in the third photograph, you can see a child, uh, you can see only the bones in the child. There is no uh, flesh at all. The reason is that he may not be, not be getting the proper quantity of the food. It means that is a nutritional stress is there. That's why the structure is like this. And if you see the global hunger map of the recent, that is 2020 global hunger map, you can see the countries, some countries were coated with uh, blue in color, and some countries were coated with uh, uh, dark red color. And here you can see the countries which were coated with uh, blue in color, there the <clears throat> undernourishment is very, very less. It is less than 2.5%. But whereas the countries which are coated with uh, dark red color, there the uh, undernourishment is more than 35%. And if you take the global hunger index, and India is ranked 94 amongst the 107, 107 nations during 2020. And during 2021, its rank was increased to 101. And here you can see the global hunger index 2018 to 2022. The rank is going on increasing. It means that, uh, what, uh, what does it mean? Here, the people, they are not getting the, especially the small children, they are not getting the nutrition food. There is the child wasting is there and the child stunting, that is the growth is not there. Child mortality rate, that is the more number of children is dying based on that. Uh, all these things only, this global hunger index was calculated. And it means that in India, most of the small children, that is the age below five years, they are not getting the sufficient quantity of the nutritious food. And uh, what is the reason? The reason is that we are telling that we are getting a lot of uh, fruits or vegetables or the grains, but uh, why we are could not able to give it to those people? There, uh, there are so many reasons. Uh, one reason is the food loss. Other one is the food waste. And these two are the barriers to the poverty reduction. And here, if you'll see uh, that, uh, uh, one uh, lady, she's just throwing the, all the fruits and vegetables. The reason is that uh, most probably she may not be having a proper storage facilities or the fruits and vegetables, they are not fit for the consumption purpose. And in another second slide, you can see that a lot of food is uh, just throwing out. That is maybe in a marriage party or in a hotel. Uh, we are we may be ordering a lot of quantity, but we are not eating the whole thing and we are wasting a lot. But if you'll see that there are so many people who are not getting the proper food, but we are unnecessarily wasting a lot. And here, if you'll see the post-harvest food loss components, there are the different components like quantitative loss, qualitative loss, and the food waste. Just now I told uh, how we are wasting the food. And quantitative loss means Say, for example, uh, we may be storing some 100 tons of the grains in a godown. After five months or six months, if you go there, we may not be getting all those uh, 100 tons of the grains. There may be losses because the rodents may attack and the, the quantity, that is the weight, will be reduced. 
and the other one is the qualitative loss qualitative loss means the quality may not be good say for example if the rat centers inside and they may be uh, uh, just uh, uh, having a urine, urine in that particular area and which are not fit for the consumption purpose and like this the quantity loss quality loss and there is a food waste will be there and here if you see the how the uh, losses are occurring and you can see that uh, say for example this is a crop paddy crop which is supposed to be in harvesting stage and exactly at the time um, these birds will come just for uh, taking these uh, grains and if they are uh, going on taking it naturally the quality the quantity will be reduced and you can see in another figure the rat it is completely enter into the stored go, go down there it has completely damaged the bag and it is uh, consuming the grains like that the loss will be occurring and you can see in the third figure there the farmer might have brought the grains to sell in the market but all of a sudden if there is a rain all the grain which he might have spent uh, at least four or five months to grow it uh, all those grains will be completely wasted and if there is no proper uh, go down you can see that the groundnut uh, kernels completely damaged by the broodseeds unfit for the consumption purpose and you can see in the other two figures uh, these are the fca go downs they are not having the sufficient uh, go downs to store all those uh, grains and they have kept it outside even they are not uh, having the sufficient or the good quality of the polythene sheets then just uh, they have left as such and all of a sudden if there is a rain all the grains will be completely wetted and uh, they are unfit for the consumption purpose and if we we'll take the uh, food losses uh, factors what are the different factors you can see one is the poor understanding of the harvesting indices say for example if we we'll take the paddy crop uh, when we have to harvest we should not uh, uh, harvest when the moisture content is very high or when it is very low the optimum moisture content is 21 to 24 percent that is when all the grains will become at least 90 percent of the grains when they will become a uh, light uh, yellow color then only we have to harvest and uh, why we are very much particular about this moisture content is that is if the moisture content is very high at that time the grains might not have set properly and if the moisture content is very low that is when we have dried for a longer period the bond in between the grain and that particular stem will not be proper it will be having very loose bond and when we are going for the harvesting generally we will give a jerk whenever we are harvesting at that time all the grains will fall down and the th second one is the poor sorting and grading practices they are allowing a damaged or decaying foods to enter the supply chain means that uh, you are seeing one tomato completely damaged tomato that is a completely bruised tomato say for example when you are transporting from one area to other area say for example from madanapalli if you are transporting to some delhi area then it may take at least two days or three days during the transportation process or uh, when you will have a completely damaged tomato inside naturally it is completely ripened and it will be releasing the gases which makes the other fruits or vegetables to also ripen very quickly and may not be fit for the consumption purpose and the third one is the poor temperature management and lack of control of relative humidity leading to shriveling here you can see these are the apples completely shriveled apples whenever we will go to the market generally we will be searching it for the good apples or a good fruits or vegetables not the shriveled one and why there are shriveling is that if you are not having a proper storage structure that is uh, when the humidity is uh, very less and when the temperature is very high we will see such type of these uh, phenomena and the other one is the poor quality package say here you can see that the tomatoes they have kept in a very big uh, uh, container 
and if it is like that the uh, tomatoes which are in the bottom line they will be completely crushed and the other one is the delays in marketing without proper storage and the other one is the over sorting leads to higher discard of edible foods sometimes what we are doing is we may be preferring a very good colored one very good size or very good shape of the fruits say for example if we we'll take the apples say some may be preferring that 1 kg means only four apples should be there that means each apple should weigh around 250 grams and if you are going with this over sorting naturally we will be selecting the best quality and we are throwing the uh, other quality material say for example 100 grams uh, weight of the no, uh, apple or if it is not a very good colored one red colored one we may be throwing it out other one is the poor choice of packages with focus on cosmetic features rather than on strength ventilation moisture control here you can see these are the apples kept in a small container most probably this container is not having a sufficient strength say for example if uh, this container falls from top to the bottom uh, due to uh, uh, this uh, falling these apples may damage as that particular uh, packaging material is not uh, for having a sufficient strength similarly if there is no ventilation facility small holes should be there so that uh, there should be uh, whatever the inside air is there that air has to go out and fresh air has to come inside if such facilities are not there it may uh, all the fruits or vegetables which uh, we were keeping it in this type of the containers will also damage other one is the sell by or use by dates nowadays you can see that uh, in the containers uh, we are keeping uh, certain fruits or vegetables and uh, as we are giving uh, in the case of these uh, tablets you might have seen that the manufacturing date expiry date like that similarly in the case of these uh, fruits or vegetables also they are uh, having some uh, uh, what you will call that uh, uh, technologies where it will give the it will change the color of the sensor and thereby we can say that uh, you can use uh, uh, by 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 other one is the left on harvested the appearance does not meet strict quality standards say in this figure you can see these are the apples the farmer has not harvested he has left as such the reason may be that uh, the appearance the apple requires standard uh, Uh, color and the standard size and the standard size uh, and all these things. If it is not uh, uh, may met, uh, then he has not harvested. Another reason is the disposing is cheaper than selling during the glut season. Here, in the case of the tomatoes, especially in the Chittoor district, we are facing that sometimes the cost of the tomato is around a hundred rupees per kg. Sometimes the farmers they are not at all. Uh, uh harvesting the crop the reason may be that he has to spend a lot of amount uh, in uh, giving to the laborers for harvesting purpose and he may not be getting the profit that's why he is just uh, leaving as such or just he is throwing it out and the other one is the raw material was wasted during the size reduction operations if you might have seen the uh, chips that are available in the market that is the well packed uh, uh one there they are keeping only some uh, s- uh, 7 to 10 uh, pieces and costing uh, uh, 10 rupees or so the reason is that they they are maintaining them well sized uh, t- uh, potatoes the undersized one the edges one all those things they are just uh, throwing it out similar is the case with the french fries also they a lot of waste is wasted at uh, industry level and if you see the losses during the various post harvest operations that is the operations includes the cutting handling manual threshing sun drying uh, storage village milling and small retailers and every level there will be wastage from 1 to 5% and some cases it is even 5 to 10% both in the manually operated one and in the machine operated one the losses will be there generally the losses we will be calling it as 10 to 13% losses it will be varying from area to area crop to crop it will be varying and here if you see the food supply chain or the food pipeline 
that is from processing to the marketing there are various operation like processing if you take there the broken grain say for example if at all you are uh, whatever the uh, in the case of the rice meal if you are not using the rubber roll mills and if you are using the other old uh, uh, machines there definitely the broken grain will be more and excessive dehulling and trimming and nowadays uh, some people what they are doing is they are getting the rice from the stores the size of the uh, rice will be a little bit uh, bigger in size and they are trimming it that is dehull that is the trimming will be done after trimming it they are selling it as a bpt5204 that is a fine varieties there also the powder will be completely wasted and in the case of the transport when you are taking the transport by using some lorries and if the lorries uh, uh, chassis is not good and if there are any damage or if there are any holes will be there during the transportation there will be the spillage will be there bruisage breakage leakage all those things and coming to the storage during the storage if your storage structure is not good there is every chance there is a uh, insect attack will be there molds bacteria sprouting rancidity over ripening and here if you see the production and post harvest scenario in the case of the food grains the production was around 316 million ton during 2021 22 fruits was around 130 uh, 103 million tons vegetables was 197 million tons though we are producing a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables we are not processing properly and uh, a lot of fruits and vegetable is wasted and if you see the countries which are processing properly there you can see the malaysia philippines they are processing nearly 80% of the fruits and vegetables but in india if you see the processing is only 2% say the wastage we can minimize it only when you could able to process it store it and uh, you can use it afterwards but in india it is not happening but whereas in other countries like philippines and malaysia they are processing properly and they are utilizing it afterwards and if you see the status of uh, this post harvest losses in india the central institute of post harvest engineering and technology ludhiana they have evaluated uh, and they have given the reports like in the case of the cereals the losses will be around 6% pulses it is 6 oil seeds it is 6% and in the fruits and vegetables it is 18% and they have calculated that uh, the total uh, amount that will be wasted due to improper post harvest storage structures it is around 92650 crores per year during 2017 and 18 almost uh, 5 years is over now it may be around 1.3 or 1.4 uh, lakh crores per year and the importance of post harvest technology is the main thing is minimization of the post harvest losses safe storage value addition of the products and utilization of the uh, waste and the by products why are these losses are so high the reason and reason is the double cropping one harvest usually falls in the rainy season and sun drying is not possible at that time because the farmers they may be going with the double cropping that is every year they may be raising two crops one crop exactly at the time when you want to harvest it exactly at that time there will be rain will be there and he cannot harvest it even if it will harvest you cannot dry it that is the problem other one is the labor shortage during the harvest period so if you take the paddy crop or the wheat crop exactly the crop will be coming and uh, you require at least 10 to 15% to harvest another 10 to 15% for threshing operations but in a village hardly we may be having 100 people or so and if you want to harvest uh, some 15 or 20 acres all the people cannot harvest it uh, at a time if you are not harvesting in time and if you are delaying it there also there will be shattering losses will be there and these are the main problems uh, if at all you are not going with the proper harvesting time and if the laborers are shortage then how to reduce these post harvest losses 
You can reduce the post harvest losses either by using the mechanizing harvesting machines or the modern technologies for drying, storage, and processing. And now you can see this is a pedal operated paddy thrasher. It is a very simple device. The main intention of this one is that if a farmer is having a very small quantity, he can purchase this type of the machine. He can thrash the paddy crop and the efficiency will be around 99% and the output capacity is 40 to 50 kg per hour. And the other one is the improved post harvest technologies and management. There you can see that the mechanizing the harvesting. That is generally I told you that 10 to 15 laborers are required. And uh, Say, for example, 20 laborers are required to harvest and thread the paddy for one acre. But if at all you're using this machine, this machine can harvest and thresh the grain within one hour. And they may be charging around 2,500 to 3,000 rupees. And the another advantage is that the grain losses can be reduced from 5 to 10 percent to 1 percent. And avoidance of delays in minimizing the quantity loss, harvesting cost can be decreased by around 20%. Next, another problem is the drying problem. And uh, this is a Louisiana State University dryer, LSU dryer, where we will have a complete control of the drying process. Whatever the temperature you require, say 40, 50 degrees temperature, at that particular temperature, we can dry the crop and thereby we can minimize the quality loss. And moreover, as it is a, a, a small industry where we'll be using this uh, uh, paddy dehusking also operation and whatever the rice husk that we are getting it, the same rice husk can be utilized as a burn, burn for burning purpose to get the heat. And the same heat can be utilized for drying this particular crop. And this is a mobile paddy dryer. Nowadays, some farmers, they are asking for the paddy mobile paddy dryer. dryer. And uh, here you can see this uh, mobile paddy dryer, it will be moved one field to the other field. We require a tractor. It can be hitched to the tractor. And its capacity is around 2.5 tons per batch. Its cost will be varying from 7.5 lakhs to 10 lakh rupees from company to company. And it will reduce the moisture content from 23% to 14%. <coughs> it requires nearly two hours, 10 minutes. That is for loading, drying, and unloading and it requires a fuel of nearly 15 liters per hour it means it for two hours means it requires nearly 30 to 35 hour liters of the fuel that is the main hindrance the farmers are asking sir whenever uh, there will be rain will be there we want the mobile paddy dryer no doubt the mobile paddy dryer is there it is functioning very nicely but the problem is that meeting the fuel cost Next, this is a bubble dryer and uh, this solar bubble dryer, if you'll see the structure, it is made with the polythene, UV stabilized polythene material. It is something like our bubble uh, uh, balloons, where if you pump the air, it expands. Similarly, here you can see at the bottom side, you can see that there are two fans are there and those two fans will be rotated by using a solar panel. The solar panel, it will be getting the solar light, converting the light into the electricity, and that electricity, it will be utilized for running the fans. And thereby, inside, it will be maintaining the air. And you can see whatever the material that you want to dry, say, for example, either the paddy or the uh, wheat, you can keep inside. The main intention of this uh, dryer is that whenever you are using a, any transparent material, either the polythene material, polycarbonate material, or any glass material, the light, which is having a short waves, it enters inside. The short wave radiation, it becomes a long wave radiation. It will not go back. It will be trapped inside. The temperature will be increased. 
say for example outside if the temperature is 30 degrees inside it may be 38 or 40 degrees depending upon the intensity of the light it means nearly 8 to 10 degrees of the temperature will be increased inside just by using one covering material okay and uh, thereby the time required to dry any produce will be very less next is another operation is a winnowing operation that is after harvesting and threshing operation we have to clean the grains and generally the women laborers are engaged and whenever there will be a wind will be there only at that time we can uh, use the, the, uh, that winnowing operation can be done but instead if you could have a, a winnower like this there you can process very quickly it prac it uh, process nearly 40 bags of paddy per hour and its cost will be around uh, 1 lakh rupees next after doing all these operations sometimes uh, these farmers they are taking the paddy crop from their village to a nearby town where there will be rice mills will be there instead now the mobile rice mills are also available in the market this rice mill means it should have a one cleaning unit, cleaner and grader unit, separation unit, then uh, uh, rice hullier units and polishing unit. All these club together, they have assembled on a one big frame and it will be attached to the tractor and a, a driver, he can carry this uh, machine from one field to the other field or one village to the other village and its cost was around 5.5 lakh rupees and its capacity is 8 quintal per hour, but it requires uh, higher end uh, tractors, 45 to at least 55 HP of the tractor is required to do these operations. Next, you can see in the case of the groundnut, the threshing operation is a very serious problem. And uh, here you will have the different types of the threshers are available in the market. One is the dry pod groundnut thresher. It means after uh, pulling all those uh, <clears throat> crop, you will be keeping it in the field itself for a couple of days for drying purpose. Then you can use this type of the trash uh, to remove the parts. Okay, And its cost will be around 4.2 lakhs. It will be separating the parts of our nearly 200 to 250 kg of the parts per hour. It requires nearly four to six laborers are required. Other one is the wet pot groundnut thresher. Here the main advantage is that as soon as you will uh, uh, remove the um, plants, immediately after one hour or so, we can use this groundnut thresher, that is a wet pot groundnut thresher. It means that uh, the pots uh, need not dry it. Within this particular thresher, we can just dump inside. The pots will be separated. Its cost will be around 4.5 lakh rupees. Capacity will be around 250 to 300 kg pots per hour. Labor required or why labor are required. This type of thresher is preferred wherever the problem is with the rains. That is, after pulling all those pots, or after pulling all those crops, if you are keeping it uh, uh, for drying purpose, and all of a sudden, if there is any rain, the entire crop will be damaged. And that's why this type of the wet pot thresher is preferred. Now, the say, for example, if the farmer would not be able to uh, uh, offer a big amount like around 4 or 4.5 lakh rupees, he can go with a small pod stripper like this one, where uh, this uh, will be rotating with a, a 1 or 2 HP motor and it will be driven with the petrol. And whenever it will be rotating, the drum will also rotating. And over the drum, there will be a, a, some loops will be there and loops will also rotate. And the, uh, we have to uh, hold this uh, 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 groundnut uh, crop in, uh, in our hands and the pot should be uh, kept on this drum and the pots will be separated. And you can see this is a groundnut pod cleaner come grader. After getting these uh, pots, there will be a lot of dust will be there, uh, sand particles or the soil particles or some uh, dried leaves will be there. And we have to separate all these things to get the clean pots for which we can use this uh, pod cleaner come grader, its cost will be around 2.5 lakh rupees and uh, the capacity will be around 300 kg per hour. 
Now, other one is the groundnut pod grader. Here also you can see that the groundnut pods, if you'll see, they will not be having the uniform size. Some groundnut pods will be having a big in size. Some will be very small in size. And here the grading will be done based on the weight or the thickness or the size. The power required is around three kilowatt electric motor is required. Two laborers are required and the investment is around five lakh rupees and its output capacity is around 650 kg per hour. And the other one is the groundnut decarticator. And this is a manually operated groundnut decarticator. Most of the farmers, they will be having this type of the device. The reason is that whenever there will be rain will be there, especially in the dry land agriculture, most of the farmers, they have to sow the, uh, the seeds within a couple of days. Because whenever there will be rain, it will be there immediately. Next, within three or four days, they have to sow it. Otherwise, if the moisture will not be available, then they cannot sow it. And in such cases, say, for example, for every one acre, they may be requiring at least uh, around 70 to 80 kg of these uh, groundnut kernels, for which they have to process at least 100 or 120 kg of the groundnut pots. And uh, if you engage the laborers, it will take a lot of time. And this is a very, very simple device. You have to keep the groundnut pots inside. And whenever we are rotating with, the pots will be uh, broken or it, uh, splitting will be done. The kernels and the uh, groundnut husk will be separated. And its cost will be around 4,000 rupees or so. And it process nearly 30 kg pots per hour. And only one laborer is required. If the machine capacity is a bigger one, we have to go with the two laborers. There, the capacity may be some 70 to 80 kg per hour. And this is a groundnut decarticator. That is a power operated groundnut decarticator. And here, the capacity will be very high. In the market, it is available 100 kg per hour to up to 500 kg per hour. And there, you have to just uh, keep the groundnut pots uh, inside. And uh, there will be a drum will be there. It will be rotating. And the uh, Pots will be splitted and uh, the kernels and the husk will be separated. And its cost will be ranging from nearly 1 lakh to up to 3.5 lakhs. Other one is the sunflower thrasher. And uh, in the case of the sunflower thrasher also, the farmers will be facing a lot of difficulty in threshing the sunflower. Generally, they will be using the sticks to uh, get the sunflower seeds. And here, you'll be having a very big uh, machine will be there. It will be tractor operated. The output capacity will be six to nine quintals per hour and efficiency will be around 100%. And this is a sunflower dehelling mill. That is the outer layer, that is the husk has to be removed it. And this was developed at uh, uh, Sifet, Ludhiana. And it consists of a centrifugal type dehuller and the aspirator and the separation unit where it will separate the uh, sunflower seed separate and the husk will be separated and its capacity will be around 400 to 500 kg per hour. And the other one is the tubular mesh sheller. Generally, whenever you want to shell these maize, it is not possible for you to use your hand and shell it. You have to use this type of the tubular mesh sheller. It is nothing but like a small tube. Inside the tube, there will be a number of blades will be there. Maybe three blades or four blades will be attached inside. And we have to inside, uh, we have to uh, in, insert the maize cob inside. And uh, from one hold, one hand, we have to hold the maize sheller. And uh, from the second hand, you have to rotate that maize cob. Whenever you are rotating it, the blades will uh, uh, will uh, separate the uh, grains. And like that, we will separate these uh, maize uh, cobs. And finally, we'll get the seeds. And its capacity will be around 15 to 20 kg per hour. And these are the other small uh, devices for separation of these uh, uh, maize uh, seed from the maize cobs. Uh, one person is sitting, another person just inserting it. And uh, uh, one the first person just uh, is rotating it. And uh, you can see this is a tractor operated may sheller come dehusker. This is a big unit. 
and uh, there uh, you can uh, just uh, inside uh, uh, it will be rotating with the tractor and uh, you can see that we will be dumping the material inside that is the maize cloth we have to dump inside after this uh, threshing operation uh, the maize uh, seed will be separated and its capacity will be around 16 to 20 quintal per hour the efficiency will be 96 to 98 percent and the cleaning efficiency will be also 94 to 98 percent and it saves about 60 to 70 percent in cost and 90 percent of the labor and the next is the handling that is the uh, bulk handling say after uh, harvesting the crop and threshing the crop we have to store it how to have a uh, storage and here if you see the we can store it in the different ways, like silos or the warehouse. In the silos, you can see a very, very big structures. But whereas in the case of the warehouse, we have to keep the material in the gunny bags and then we have to store it in the warehouse. Both uh, uh, that the silos are having more advantages when compared to the warehouse. You can see these where silos, they are projected in the vertical direction. But uh, in the case of the warehouse, you should pro have a proper structure. And in the case of the silos, it requires less area for installation. But in the case of the warehouse, uh, it requires the more area for the storage. The silos, it can uh, require only two square feet per metric ton. But whereas in the case of the warehouse, it requires five to eight square feet per metric ton. The storage lifespan is more in the case of the silos, it is less in the case of the warehouse. And the main advantage of the silos is that it will be having an inbuilt system to protect the grain from bacteria, insect infestation, thereby preventing the losses in the stored grain. But it is absent in the case of the warehouses. There the losses may be around two to 6% uh, in the grain stored in the warehouses. And the other one is silos are very easy to ship, erect, commission, and thereby reducing the downtime. And silos can be provided with inbuilt temperature mechanism because when you are keeping uh, grains that is in huge quantity for a longer period, inside the temperature will be increased. To reduce the temperature, we have to send a cool breeze. And in the case of the silos, automatically we can send the cool breeze, but in the warehouses, it is not possible to send it. And the principle in the silos is, that is all in, all out. That is the material will come inside, will be storing inside for a certain period. Then afterwards, the entire will be, material will be sent for the sales. Okay. And you can see some of the hermetic sto uh, sealed storage structures. There, you can see this is the plastic containers, python cocoons, and uh, you can see the super bags. And the main intention of this hermetic uh, sealed storage system is to not to allow the air. We have to reduce the air that is available inside. Air means finally the oxygen content we are reducing inside. If you have a, an air dirt enclosure, generally the biological activity of these uh, stored pests will be reduced. The reason is that the available oxygen is less. And if the insect will die after some time or become inactive, or you can use these plastic containers, whenever you are using this plastic container, the moisture migration will also be very less. Here you can see in the graph, say the oxygen level initially may be around 22% or so. After some time, say after five days or so, if you'll see, it has drastically reduced to maybe two or three percent of the oxygen level. When the oxygen level is very less, and say if the uh, stored pests are more inside the container, naturally uh, the uh, stored pests cannot survive for a longer period. They will be dying. And you can see the other benefits of the hermetic storage. That is, the insect control occurs without pesticide. The moisture control prevents re in the tropics. Higher seed germination means 
lower seed rates it minimizes the losses mean more grain of higher quality to sell and coming to the millets nowadays everyone is talking about the millets we are having the different millets like finger millet fox tail millet little millet proso millet boneyard millet podo millet prom top millet there are number of millet these are the small millets and uh, uh, the farmers are uh, cultivating all these crops but some farmers they could not able to sell it in the market the reason is that there are not uh, proper facilities to process it say for example if at all you are taking the millets in the villages they are doing it by pounding in the mortar and pestle or by beating with the stick for dehulling operations it is a tedious operations and uh, you require uh, more laborers to do it and it requires more time also to reduce all these things we had to go for the machines and here you are having the machines like a destoner come grader come aspirator millet dehuller grain polisher or softener destoner come grader come aspirator these types of the machines are required if at all is anyone is very much interested to have a millet processing center the first one is the destoner come grader for millets here when the farmers are processing do you know how the farmers will be processing it that is after harvesting they will be doing the they had to do the threshing operations for doing this threshing operations generally they will be using the tractors say if, uh, if they are having a hard surface or the hard surface they will be keeping the they will be spreading all these uh, uh, plants that is the cut plants and uh, they are using the tractors when the tractors will be rotating for a couple of times the grains will be separated say for example the tractor hides it is not completely cleaned if there is any mud is attached to it then the mud will also be added to that along with the grains and that's why we have to take care that whenever you are using the tractors for threshing operations we have to uh, tell the farmers to clean the tractor tires so that the mud will not be added to that uh, mud or soil will not be added to the grains and whenever the farmer will be bringing the material first we have to process it we have to clean it say at our uh, tirupati post our 10 class center we are having this uh, millet processing uh, unit wherein all the four machines are available with us the farmers are coming to us and we are charging rupees 10 per kg to process all this and here as soon as he will bring say for example if he will bring some 500 kg of the material we have to go with the a cleaning unit that is a pre cleaner unit where it will remove stones and impurities and grading unit is attached for size wise grading because there will be a number of uh, seeds will be there and uh, it will be separating uh, different sizes and this aspirator it removes the lightweight impurities like the small stones or soil particles it will be removing here the principal use is the only the gravity separator capacity will be around 250 kg per hour and it will be having the two motors will be there one is to remove the destoner the for the 2 hp other one is a grader with a 1 hp motor its cost will be around 1.1 lakh to 1.2 lakh and the next one is the dehulling unit dehulling means separation of the husk from the grain and this is a very crucial step and there it depends on the grain size grain moisture content grain variety also and here you are having the two types of the dehuller one is basing on the centrifugal principle other one is on the abrasive dehulling in the case of the centrifugal uh, abrasive dehulling machine there the principle is uh, abrasion and uh, the dehulling like small millets like fox tail millet little millet podo proso and boneyard millets all can be processed here and this particular machine has been developed at uh, central institute of agriculture engineering bhopal and here whenever you are feeding the material the husk and rice will be separated through a cyclone separator and the capacity will be around 100 kg per hour its cost will be around 90000 to 1 lakh 
and the other one is the uh, D, uh, single stage dehuller and the double stage dehullers are available in the market and there the principle is it is the centrifugal principle and here you can see the two drums and these two drums and in the case of the single stage it will be having a single drum and uh, after cleaning units we have to feed the material inside and here when the motor will be running it generally it will be running with a 7.5 hp motor and at that time whatever the grains that are coming in the first uh, uh, chamber there the all the grains will be thrown away inside the drum that is the centrifugal action will be taking place the husk will be separated and it will be coming to the next drum that is the second drum in the second drum also that centrifugal principle works and uh, whatever the leftover uh, grains will be there along with the husk, they will be separated. It means completely around 98 to 99 percent of the grains the husk will be separated and it will be coming out and its capacity will be around 300 kg per hour. And its cost will be around 2 lakh to 2 lakh 20 thousand rupees. And afterwards, we are having another machine like a grain a softener or the polisher. Some grains, they are very, very tough, especially like the brown top millet, boneyard millet, podo millet and prosote millet. They are very, very tough. You cannot uh, uh, remove the uh, entire husk in the case of the centrifugal dehuller. Before using that centrifugal dehuller, that is a double stage uh, dehuller unit, we have to keep the grains in this type of the grain softener for some time, maybe for three minutes or four minutes. There it will be doing, it is the softening, that is the top husk, it will be a little bit loosened. After loosening it, we have to send it to the main double stage dehuller unit. And here this capacity is 40 kg per hour and its cost is around 80,000 uh, rupees and it will be running with a 3 HP motor. And uh, finally, you are having a other de-stoner come grader come aspirator that is a post cleaner unit that is the final that is uh, in the case of the double stage uh, de-husker unit, we will be getting the uh, grain uh, the, uh, along with the husk and uh, no doubt they have separated, but, uh, uh, but we have to separate them separately. That is the, the grain has to be separated and the husk has to be separated. And for which this uh, de stoner come grader come aspirated, that is the post cleaner unit, we had to use it. And here its capacity is 250 kg per hour. And uh, uh, there uh, its, uh, its cost is around 1 lakh 12,000 rupees. And here it is having a de stoner unit for which a 2 HP motor is required. For grader, it requires 0.5 HP motor is required. And coming to the dal mills also, this. Uh, if any uh, person is very much interested uh, to be an entrepreneur, he can have such type of all small machines. And this is a doll mill where the processing capacity is 100 kg per hour for PGNP and 125 kg per hour for green gram or black gram. And uh, the doll recovery will be around 70 to 75 percent and uh, 80 to 80 percent in the case of the black gram. And here there are two processes are there. Uh, one is the wet process, other one is the dry process. In the case of the wet process, all the doll, it has to be drenched in the water for uh, overnight, maybe some eight to 10 hours, you have to keep it inside the water, then it should be drained. After draining, it has to be dried for a couple of days. After drying only, we had to uh, uh, send this material to the doll mill. And in the case of the and that is known as the wet, wet method. In the case of the dry method, we have to use 0.03% of the oil. You can use any type of the oil, either the sunflower oil, or you can use the uh, uh, groundnut oil. Any oil you can use it. You have to use only 0.03%. It means 0 0.03 uh, kgs per kg of the grain. And uh, there, you have to thoroughly mix the grains. The oil should be thoroughly mixed and it should be heaped for overnight. Then afterwards, 
it should be dried for a couple of days and that uh, there we can use it uh, in the dal mills and this is a small capacity dal mill 100 kg per hour whereas you can see the other one this is a double roller mini dal mill its capacity is a bigger one its capacity is 2.5 to 3 tons per day the recovery will be 70 to 80 percent depending upon the uh, dal that we are using it it will be running with a 5 hp motor cost will be around 4 lakh rupees the next operation is the drying operation the farmers may be taking uh, three to four months to raise the crop but if he could not able to dry it properly whatever the time he has spent whatever the time money that he has spent it everything will be wasted say this is the drying you can see one is the traditional method other one is the drying on the top pollen these are the two methods that uh, the farmers are practicing in the case of the chilies you can see that is they are drying uh, on the floor and that floor we have prepared by using the cow dung and uh, there the problem is the soil bone contamination will be there and the drying time takes more time maybe 14 to 15 days in the case of the traditional method other one is the drying in the tarpaulin there the blue color polythene sheet uh, they are the farmers are using it and the drying time it takes at least two days one to two days will be reduced the contamination can be avoided and all these problem can be sorted out <coughs> if you will have the solar tunnel dryers here you can see the structure of the solar tunnel dryer that is the first one is the basic structure the second figure you can see that is the uv stabilized polythene cover material they have used okay and there we have to, we should use the ventilators also because the moisture that is the moist air has to come out and you can see these are the solar tunnel dryers there at the bopatla area and the guntur area the farmers are using and you there you can use the main thing is that you have to use the uv stabilized that is the ultraviolet stabilized polythene sheet cover of at least 150 gsm and the main intention of these uh, polythene cover especially the uv stabilized the advantage is that the rays that is the short wave radiations will penetrate through these uh, covers and inside when it enter inside they will become the long wave radiation and the long wave radiation will not go back the temperature will be increased maybe 8 to 10 degrees temperatures will be increased say for example if outside it is around 30 degrees temperature inside it will be around 38 to 40 degrees when the temperature is more naturally the drying will take place very quickly and at the same time as we have used the uv stabilized material the ultraviolet rays will not penetrate inside thereby the quality of the chilies will be very good there it is very good that is red in color and the drying time will also be reduced and the earlier case if it is taking around 14 days this one will take only around six to seven days it means nearly 50 percent of the time will be reduced in this type of the dryer similarly you can see the onions also sometimes the onions are available in the market at a very very cheap price at that time we are will not be having any storage structures to store all these onions so what we can do is cut it into small pieces use this type of the dryer dry the material then store it and you can use it when the cost will be very high sometimes the cost will be around 60 or 70 rupees per kg at that time we can use the dehydrated onion slices and here you can see this is the other one drying of the mango pulp in solar tunnel dryer see you know the in telugu we'll call it as the mamidi tandra or mango bar and these mango bar generally they will be preparing it outside under sunlight and there lot of contamination will be there 
lot of soil particles will be adding. Say, for example, if there is any wind, along with the wind, small dust particles may be added to it. And if at all you are using this type of the solar tunnel dryer, where the mango pulp will be kept in the trays and keep it for a, a couple of days, the, whatever the moisture content inside, it will be removed. You will get a beautiful leather, that is the mango leather, cut it into small pieces, wrap it in a beautiful wrapper, you can sell it in the market. And this is the drying of groundnut pots in the solar tunnel dryer. Actually, at our center, post harvest Technology Center at our Tirupati, we are having this solar tunnel dryer. And especially the curry harvested crop, that is in the month of October or November, we are harvesting the crop. At that time, the rains will be there and whatever the produce will be there, that is the harvested produce, if you are keeping it outside, it will not be dried. If there is a rain, then a lot of uh, fungal attack will be there and these uh, pots will be, uh, the taste will be completely changed there uh, and that's why we have to invariably dry in this type of the dryer, solar tunnel dryer, where it will take less time and even if there is a rain, as it is a polycarbonate material, completely it protects from the rain and it will take uh, only 50% of the time to dry the grain to dry these uh, groundnut pots. And the other one is the packaging aspect. And the packaging are also very, very important. Say, for example, this is the tomatoes or the uh, apples. Whenever you are sending the apples, we are taking a lot of care because it is cost is very high, but not the other crops like, say, for example, tomatoes. In this picture, you can see that a lady is carrying the tomatoes, but whereas this, uh, Wood crate, it is uh, the height of this uh, crate is uh, very high, more height it is having. And whatever the tomatoes will be there at the bottom side, completely it will be crushed. And what we have to take care is uh, that container should not be filled either too loosely or too tightly. Where even whenever you are sending it to far away places in the tracks, we should be very careful that too loose in the uh, box, if you are keeping it, Say in the, tra in the tractor or in the case of this any container, wherever it is moving, all of a sudden, if there is any, if the driver applies the brakes, naturally, all these uh, fruits or vegetables they will move from one end to the other end, as they have packed loosely, and there will be damage. Similarly, if you are completely overpacking, there will be the compression, bruising. Okay, and that's why. You have to provide either the shredded newspapers or the lightweight fillers for shipping the these things. And similarly, we have to provide the ethylene absorber sachets also in the container because it, they will reduce the rate of ripening of the fruits. Next, coming to the other, this packaging of tomato in the corrugated cotton boxes. Uh, these were the experiments conducted at uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, Coimbatore. Uh, there, they have provided the cotton boxes. You can see that each tomato they have kept in one, uh, 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 this one. And whenever it is moving in the tracks, naturally one tomato will not come in contact with the other tomato. The Whatever the material kept inside, that is the cotton material, all those things, they will take the, they will be having the cushioning effect and the, there will not be any damage and uh, only the damage is uh, around 14 to 18 percent when compared to the bamboo basket uh, was around a high, around 30 percent. And the cost of packaging will be around 2.25 K rupees per kg. And all these things uh, we can do it only when the prices will be very high. And the other one is the osmotic dehydration of the banana. All of you may be knowing what is meant by osmotic. Osmotic dehydration means that is we will be keeping, say, this preparation of this uh, rasagulla uh, like that, or the, uh, you can see that they will be preparing the uh, sugar syrup. Within that sugar syrup, they will be keeping the material. Okay, that it means that whatever the moisture content is the available inside, it will be removed and the sugar will be added. Similarly, in the case of the banana, sometimes the banana will be is selling in the market at a very, very low prices. And in such cases, 
the best quality bananas what we can do is we can cut it into a small sizes that cut material can be kept in the osmotic syrup for a couple of hours then the osmosis process will be done it means whatever the moisture content is available in the banana it will be going out the sugar will be added to it it will be completely drained then the blotting will be done that is the whatever the sugar syrup is adhered it has to be removed and then the drying has to be done you can use any type of the dryer either the cabinet dryer or the vacuum dryer and then it will be completely dried you can pack it and you can sell it in the market as in osmotic dehydrated banana and then these are the uh, quality of the bananas you can see the vacuum packed one is it is supposed to be the best quality one the other one is the osmo dried banana the last one is the osmo vacuum dried banana and this uh, osmo vacuum dried banana you can see this is the quality and uh, like this you can use any one of those methods to dry the material and you can sell it in the market similarly the goba also available abundantly sometimes and uh, its cost will be very very less it may be around uh, 10 rupees or 15 rupees per kg at that time you can prepare this type of the bar you cut it keep it in the osmotic syrup for a couple of day hours remove it dry it then uh, you can pack it you can pack it and it will be available at least for 6 months the storage capacity will be around 6 months and similarly you can prepare the goa beverage there its storage life will be 3 months at room temperature 6 months at refrigerated uh, condition and similarly the intermediate moisture fruit goa also you can prepare the moisture content will be very high a little bit 25 to 30% and you can store it for one month or so and similarly here you can see the amla beverage and that is with 20% amla anola juice and um, sugar syrup will be 70% with a 25 degree breaks and you can add the pineapple juice of 10% and this type of the amla beverage can be marketed in the market and similarly this osmotically dehydrated amla the amla after cutting it into small pieces keep it in the sugar syrup of 50 degree centigrade 50% at 50 degrees temperature and the amla to sugar syrup we had to maintain 1 is to 4 ratio that is one part of the uh, amla and four parts of the sugar syrup immerse Uh, in that syrup for nearly two days, dry at uh, 60 degrees centigrade for hour. Hour. Similarly, amla powder, amla toffee. Uh, you can see here, uh, and you can wrap it, and you can sell it in the market. Next, uh, what are the different technologies for the tomato paste? Is that you know that the tomato paste during the glut season. it ranks uh, amongst the processing of vegetables it is rich source of vitamins uh, a and c and uh, this is a flow diagram of the production of the tomato paste the tomato paste say for example if you are taking the 100 kg first you have to sort it and then you have to wash it after washing it if you are using it in the pulper we will be getting the pulping uh, pulp nearly 90 kg of the pulp we will get it if you are evaporating it the moisture will be evaporated nearly 76 kg of the moisture will be evaporated and finally we will get around 14 kg of the tomato paste it will be maintaining around 25 degree base you have to cool it then add the preservatives like 250 ppm benzoic acid then pack it and store it and this is the pulper which we can use it its capacity will be 100 kg per hour power required is 1 hp the cost of the unit is 50000 rupees the pulping efficiency is 90% and whatever the pulp that you are getting is the, the, that is the paste sorry paste that paste we can store it either in the aluminum pouches glass bottles or low density polyethylene bags for a period of nearly 4 months 
And the other one is the shrink wrapping machine. In the shrink packaging, you can see that is that uh, uh, we had to go it for a high end uh, crops. Say, for example, the capsicum, which is very costly, for which we had to go, or the tomatoes, whenever the cost is very high, say, for example, 80 to 100 rupees per kg, at that time only we can go for it. That is nothing but completely the plastic sheet, it completely wrapped the individual fruit or vegetable. Completely wrapping. That is the wrapping machine. And uh, what you had to do is the plastic sheet, you had to cut and you had to you know, keep, uh, uh, keep the fruit or vegetable inside that particular plastic machine, uh, plastic sheet. Then when the particular machine will be operated, is, uh, the temperature uh, will be elevated. The plastic slowly starts melting and it completely wraps the fruit or vegetable. And here you can see the storage life. In the case of the tomato, the unwrapped one, if you could be able to store for 10 days in the ambient condition, in the case of the shrink wrapping, you can store it for nearly 19 days. In the cold storage, you can keep it for nearly 39 days. You just see in the ambient condition, you are keeping it for 10 days. If it is shrink wrapped in the ambient, it is 19 days. In the cold storage, it is nearly 39 days. Similarly, in the case of the capsicum, you can keep it outside only for four days. If it is a shrink wrapped one, you can keep it for nearly 25 days. And in the cold storage, you can keep it for nearly 46 days. It means that if shrink wrapping will be done to a fruit or vegetable, which is very costly, you can enhance its shelf life period at least from 10 days to 20 days. Now you can see these are the uh, shrink wrapped apples. You can see the difference also between the shrink wrapped one and the non shrink wrapped apple. The shrink wrapped one, it is uh, maintaining a good color, whereas the non shrink wrapped one, it could not be able to maintain the color. And other one is the modified atmospheric packing system. There, in the case of the modified atmospheric packing system, there, all of you know that outside the A, contains nearly 25% oxygen and 79% of the nitrogen. And in the case of the modified atmospheric packing, the name itself shows that modified atmospheric packing means wherever you are keeping either the fruits or vegetable, there the condition of the atmosphere or are modifying it. Instead of maintaining the oxygen 21%, we are maintaining the oxygen as only 3%. The nitrogen we are increasing instead of 79%, we are increasing to 92%. And the carbon dioxide level, it will be around 5%. It means we are not uh, reducing the oxygen content so that the fruits or vegetables, the oxygen content availability will be less for those fruits or vegetables. And uh, here, this was the uh, experiment conducted for the tomatoes. There you can see. This is the fresh, that is the first day tomatoes, uh, that is uh, a little bit green in color. Next, after 30th day, you can see, for 25th day and 60th day, you can see that is the, the tomatoes. They are kept in the modified atmosphere packing using the uh, silicon technology, silicon membrane technology. That is the, it will be controlling the oxygen level. And this is the silicon technology that is on the top. Uh, the silicon uh, membrane they have kept it uh, and there you can see the quality of this uh, tomato even after 60 other day it is good and similarly nowadays in the case of this okra uh, okay and in the case of this okra also they are completely packing in the <coughs> modified atmosphere packaging technology whenever this okra and the beetle leaves are sending to far away places Okay, they are taking uh, these uh, pack, uh, they will be packed in the perforated, at least two perforations, and the diameter will be 0 0.3 mm, polypropylene film, and were stored uh, at 15 degrees temperatures at 75% relative humidity in an environmental chamber, and its uh, lifespan was 19, 9 days for okra and 13 days for beetle leaf. And the other technology is the banana comb cutter. 
that is developed at the Central Institute of Post Harvest Engineering and Technology. Generally, we will be using the knife. Using the knife. We are using the knife and we are cutting it. And at that time, there are the banana will be cutting. And the, instead, you can see this is a small device. This small device, it is having a small curvature there. That is the uh, is the blade will be there. And uh, this curvature, it is uh, equivalent to the, uh, you can see this is the trunk will be there. That it will be having certain diameter. Equivalent to this particular diameter, it is bent. And at this bottom, there is a sharp blade will be there. By using this, we can cut it. And there will not be any damage to the banana. This is a very simple device. And similarly, this is a pomegranate aerial extraction unit. And this is at Vijayawada. What they are doing is, this pom the problem with the pomegranate uh, is that everyone knows that uh, it is good for health. But the problem is uh, removing those aerials. It is a tough job. And here you can see that uh, these aerials, a number of laborers were engaged uh, in a very hygienic condition. And uh, they are splitting all those aerials packing it and uh, they are selling it to the Gulf countries. And to remove all this uh, drudgery, these are the small devices. You can see this is the aerial extractor and uh, it is nothing but two small cylinders. Inside they have kept small blades. What you have to do is you have to insert the pomegranate fruit in between these two extractors just to rotate this one clockwise, other anti-clockwise, thereby uh, this uh, fruit will be uh, uh, completely cut and the aerials will be separated. And this is a mechanical aerial extractor unit. And uh, there the capacity will be very high, 500 kg per hour. Efficiency is 90 to 94%. There here you can see these are the aerials. And the other one is the zero energy cool chamber. Say every farmer or the every fruit or vegetable seller, he may not be having a refrigerated condition. And if you could able to have this type of the chamber, that is the zero energy cool chamber where the power is not required. The only thing is that you require the bricks and the sand uh, is required. And you can see this is the construction. Uh, it is something like a small pitcher. In the summer period, if you want to have a cool water, if you purchase a new pitcher and if you are keeping the water inside, though the temperature outside is 40 or 45 degrees temperature, inside you will be getting a very cool water. The same is the basic principle here. Here we are using the bricks. You know that whenever you are manufacturing the bricks, inside the bricks there will be small pore spaces will be there. Okay, And the air will be passing from one end to the other end. And here what we have to do is you have to construct like a small room, say. There are two rooms will be there and uh, uh, there will be a gap in between uh, one wall to the other wall and within that gap we had to pour the sand. We had to pour the sand and uh, we had to arrange in such a way that water has to be uh, dropped above the sand particles. It means the cool breeze, sorry, the hot air, it will be touching the wall. And the wall, as it is having the bricks, you should not plast it by using the uh, cement. You should be very, very careful. Plasting should not be done. And uh, you can see that uh, when the wall is there, through that wall, through the brick, the hot air enter inside. As the uh, uh, sand particles are there, along with the air, along with the water, there the evaporation takes place. As a result, Inside that particular chamber where you are keeping the fruits or vegetables, there the temperature will be reduced to maybe around 8 to 10 degrees temperatures will be reduced. Here in this slide you can see uh, these are the different uh, uh, fruits or vegetables or the leaves uh, that we have kept uh, inside this uh, cool chamber. Uh, one say for example if you take this spinach, one is the refrigerated condition supposed to be the best. Next is the cool chamber that is also in green color. Whereas in the room temperature, which you have kept it, it has uh, turned into the pale color, pale yellow color. 
right? And here also you can see this is the uh, banana that was kept in the room temperature, cool chamber, and the cool store. And the one which we kept in the cool chamber also, it is uh, on par with the cool store one. Next is the tomato graders. So whenever you want to grade it, either the lemon or the tomato, which will be in the spherical in shape, we have to grade it, the bigger size and the smaller size. Here, if you'll see, it is a very, very simple technique, having a number of rollers, that number, say for example, number of pipes, having a, maybe a two inch diameter or so, the pipes have arranged in such a way, at one end, or that is at the top end, the distance in between pipe to pipe will be less. As it proceeds to the downward uh, direction, the gap in between pipe to pipe will be increased, right? The gap in at a top level will be very less, but at the bottom level will be more. When you will pour the uh, any spherical uh, fruit or vegetable from top level, when it passes, you have to keep it at a, with a certain slope. When it uh, moves from top to the bottom level, at that time, the one which will be smaller in size will be dropped at the uh, about uh, that is at the top portion and when it travels and when it uh, see the gap more gap at that place only the bigger fruits or vegetables will be dropped like that we can separate all the fruits and vegetables very easily This is a tomato uh, seed extractor unit. So if you want, especially if uh, anyone is interested in the seed companies, like tomato seed, if you want to sell it, you have to separate the seed. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, we have to feed it inside. Inside there will be a number of blades will be there. And those blades, when they are rotating with this motor, it will be completely crushed and the tomato seed will be separated. And the capacity will be 150 kg per hour. And this is a brinjal seed extractor. And here also the brinjal seed, it will be crushed. And this is a drum where we will be keeping the water and uh, the brinjal seed will be completely settles uh, at the bottom, whereas the flesh will be on the top level. Like that we have can separate the brinjal seed. And this is a chili seed extractor. You can see this is a drum. Inside the drum, there will be a number of beaters are there. That is the number of blades are there. When you will feed the material inside, the beaters will be rotated by using this electric motor and the chili uh, will be separated, the seed will be separated. Here you can see the other one is the drying of fruits and vegetables in a solar dryer. Earlier I told about the solar tunnel dryer. This is a small dryer where you can see uh, this is the glass sheet. And inside you can see a three number of these uh, fans are there and those fans will be rotated by using these uh, solar panels. The solar panels, they will convert uh, the light energy into electrical energy and uh, the fans will be rotated and thereby whatever the cut fruits are there, fruits or vegetables that we are kept keeping it inside, there will be a number of trays will be there, uh, some three or six trays will be there. <coughs> The moisture will be removed and it will be sent out by using the fans. And this dry product, we can sell it in the market. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful session, sir. So now the uh, session is open for the audience to clarify any questions you have. Madam, uh, this is Jagdish Kandregla from Ankapalli. Hello. Uh, hello. Sir, uh, first of all, I am very thankful to you, sir. You are giving a great uh, seminar on regarding on post harvesting technology. Mm. Uh, I know a little bit about this, but today I have learned a lot. Sir, here my question is, you are lastly explained the, regarding the solar dryer. 
Uh-huh. So what is what is the cost of that solar dryer, sir? Cost will be we are having thirty feet by seventeen feet. Its cost was around two point five lakh. The what is the capacity, sir? But my what is size, the capacity? Size, size. I am telling you that because uh, you may be using the different materials. Okay. Uh, rough rough size. I am saying thirty feet length, seventeen uh, mm-hmm. feet width, and a height okay. of around twelve feet. Its okay. cost was around. Uh, inside you will be having the Kadapa slab uh, floor. That is the black okay. stones. Okay. And its cost was around two point five lakh. Sir. Uh, I mean, okay, okay, sir. It is it available in private market or uh, from your? Yeah, yeah, private, private sir? only, private. Private. You can uh, okay. even you can Google and you can see at Erode uh, there are some people are there. Okay. And if at all you are going with the fruits or vegetables uh, inside, they will be providing the trays also. Then uh, the cost will be extra. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. okay. Because the uh, number sir, of trays will be there. It is something like our uh, racks, book racks. You can okay. keep a number of fruits or vegetables. You can cut it nowadays. Uh, In the market, they are available. Say, especially in the case of the bhindi, they are selling it as the dried one. Even the tomatoes, they are available in the market, the dried one. What you have to yes. do is you have to cut it, keep it uh, in the different trays, the, the different materials. It may take uh, two or three days to dry it. Then you have to pack it, uh, and you can sell it in the market. Okay, sir. What it. about the what about the regarding uh, tunnel solar dryer? Tunnel solar dryer. What is the cost of that one? Yeah, I am talking about solar tunnel dryer. Though so you yeah. talked about the last one, initially yeah. the last one okay. is just I will show you the last one and also solar dry tunnel dryer yeah, yeah. also, sir. Yeah, At the last one. Either. One is the bigger capacity one with the polycarbonate material. You can use either the polycarbonate material or the UV stabilized polythene material. The okay. polythene material is say for example, if there is any heavy wind is there, there is chances of damage. in the carly carbonate material it is a sheet as it is a sheet there will not be damage yes sir and the other one the last figure that i have showed uh, that is a, a glass material this one it is a glass so okay. capacity is a very small capacity this one also okay. you can use it uh, on the top of your roof also no problem okay sir okay uh, this one cost maybe around 1 lakh rupees Okay, okay. We are talking about the solar tunnel dryer is two point five lakhs, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, the bigger one. I will show you. Solar, solar tunnel dryer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one. Two point five lakhs. Around two point five lakhs. At the bottom side, you can see these are the black carpet slab. Okay. And there should be the ventilator should also be there. Okay. and if possible you can have these fans also and so in our the, center we are having the fans on the top side that is automatically depending upon the uh, wind velocity they will be rotating in the industries you might have seen the fans that is the okay. turbo ventilators okay, instead okay, of turbo okay. ventilators my suggestion is that you can have the fans a uh, couple okay. of fans uh, which will pump uh, uh, fresh air inside on the quite okay. on the opposite direction you can have other two exhaust fans because okay, okay. the inside when it will remove the moisture content that moisture content has the moist air should go out otherwise the drying will take place uh, more time sir ca- can we use this solar uh, tunnel dryer for uh, post harvesting technology in uh, uh, pop by amla slices amla yeah, slices yeah yeah that's what i'm telling inside no inside you can uh, have the number of trays okay Uh, like uh, we are bookshelf we are having similarly those company people they will be supplying they will be having a one a big table will be there where you can keep uh, two or three trays uh, at different heights because you have to utilize this solar tunnel dryer in an effective way instead of using it only on the ground floor you can have a number of trays at a say for example at a 30 cm height some another at 60 cm height another 90 cm height like that at a different heights you can keep the material also okay okay sir uh, last uh, time i want to share something on uh, regarding the post harvesting technology uh-huh. what happens in 2016 sir i have gone to iihr bangalore uh uh-huh. so at that time i have taken a papaya fruit bar and you are, you are saying that mango fruit bar like that i have taken a papaya slices uh-huh. uh, amla candy and a mango fruit bar 
At okay. the time, the project cost for the 500, uh, I mean, often capacity, it is a project cost is around nearly one crore. Oh my God. Oh, the, at the time, now, until now I have tried in a lot of ways due to missionary cost and everything, I am unable to establish uh, those uh, product until now from past six years. So due to the very high cost in project cost, please, could you please help me in a lowest cost as much as possible for whatever the product I have taken, if uh -huh. it is very useful to establish uh, asthmatical dehydrated product yeah. for Actually, recently I have gone through on YouTube also. Some people, some wife and husband, family members, they are okay. doing at Nellur area. Okay. Nellur, they are drying. They are using this type of the small uh, tunnel dryer, mm -hmm. and uh, they are drying it and they are selling in the market also. Okay, fine. Initially, sir, okay. please try with the smaller one. Okay, okay, the bigger okay. one means there. For example, uh, if you could not able to sell it in the market, uh, there will be huge loss will be there. Or yes, otherwise. Sir, now the Ministry of Food Processing, they are giving the amount also, one district, one product. Mm -hmm. I don't know in which uh, district you are residing. And that particular district, uh, already the government has uh, uh, notified the in particular district for particular product. If you okay. could be able to establish, say for example, Chitur, they are giving for the tomato. Okay. Similarly, uh, I don't know where you are residing. I am from Anakapalli, sir. Near oh, Anakapalli. Oh, Anakapalli, yeah. Anakapalli. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. There, uh, <coughs> uh, if you could able to trap from those people, Ministry of Food Processing, definitely okay. the burden of uh, this uh, cost will reduce. Okay, sir. Okay. okay Otherwise, okay. sir, you please uh, have a smaller one with uh, around uh, 2 lakh rupees or smaller capacity dryer like uh, 1 lakh rupee. You try yes, initially, yes. sell it at a uh, local level. If you yes, feel yes. that you can be a successful one, then you can go for a bigger one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So initially, I don't have much idea on that. At that time, the DPR will be around one crore. At the so yes. I am unable to start this one, sir. So yes, right sir. now, I got a confidence from you. Definitely, I will start uh, with the initially in a small quantity. In a small quantity. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank uh, you. So welcome, much. welcome, sir. <laughs> Hi, sir. Uh, this is funny. Uh, thanks for sharing your uh, presentation, which is very helpful. So I am from a startup company, Akshaya Agri, which is uh, recently started in Hyderabad. So we manufacture harvesters and bellers and other equipments other than tractors. Okay. Uh -huh. sir, uh, you are talking about uh, uh, portable grain dryers, right? Uh -huh. uh, so actually, we want to know as a manufacturer, uh, is this uh, demand is there? Uh, yeah, yeah. I will India. tell, sir, what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages? I will tell you. Yeah, this one, no? Yes, yes, correct. Yeah. Actually, say the dryer is functioning very nicely. Okay. Most of the farmers require this type of the dryers. Mm -hmm. The problem is that actually some company people from Hyderabad only, they came to Nellur and we have tested it. Mm -hmm. No doubt the, the dryer is functioning very nicely. Here, okay. They are having a screw conveyor. The material will be carrying to the top level and just it is dropping it. Yeah. And uh, to remove the moisture content, we require heat. Mm -hmm. For getting that heat, uh, they are burning the fuel. They are burning the diesel. Yeah. And the diesel is around 15 liters per hour it is required. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for uh, one batch means, say generally we prefer uh, 50 or 60 degrees temperatures. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that temperature, it will take a minimum 3-4 hours. But uh, the company people here, no, they have preferred uh, around 70-80 degrees temperatures. They could able to dry around two within 2 hours, 10 minutes, both loading, unloading and all these things. Now the problem is that uh, who will bear the cost of the fuel? That is the problem. Mm -hmm. The cost of the machine is around, uh, around 10 lakhs. Now, now its cost is around 10 lakh rupees. No, function wise it is uh, good okay but when it comes to the farmer level most of the time in india we are getting a uh, solar lights okay generally they will be drying it at the roadside or in the field itself okay and now uh, especially during the rainy season only the farmer will ask we want dryers but who will be investing 10 lakh rupees and who has to pay the fuel cost fuel cost nearly it requires around 25 30 liters 
costing around uh, 3 to 4000 rupees per acre per mm -hmm. acre uh, it requires uh, around 3 to 4000 rupees to dry the uh, one acre crop okay so if it gone... is cool sir if it is a cool country means sir if the temperature is around 20 or 25 degrees in the northern india say in the nepal side or in the himalayan side like uttar pradesh uh, end side northern side there when the temperature is very low in such cases they require the dryers you can manufacture and you can um, sell on those areas but here many people are asking especially whenever the rains will be there when the crop will be damaged all the farmers are asking we require the dryers this is yeah. the problem sir the capacity will be 2.5 ton per batch means uh, of course the higher end also there but uh, this is uh, uh, carrying a very big one it is very tough this uh, smaller capacity 2.5 tons per batch by using a tractor you can carry from one end to the other end but the problem is that uh, uh, hardly you can dry four acres per day okay so but, you you are saying still it is demand is there right if a government comes for it is there sir but uh, they require only during the uh, rainy season rainy season yeah. but other time they don't uh, require it because uh, they generally they will uh, dry it uh, at uh, ground level only yeah actually that's the uh, reason we are framing a problem statement when we seen in the roads in this yeah, yeah, season yeah. harvest season so a lot of grains on the grounds okay which is i'm seeing like a loss the grain mm -hmm. loss okay so to avoid that uh, we want to come with this type of solution but uh, uh, we want to understand like uh, is the government is giving any subsidies on this or like per village one portable station can we arrange like this so sir, actually, is there any study was done for that yeah yeah actually this type of the dryer the government wants to introduce in the rp case mm -hmm. and i was evaluated at uh, nellur and uh, function wise it is good if anyone okay. will tell whether the dryer is functioning or not it is functioning mm -hmm. but when it comes for the implementation side there will be some problems sir because okay. it cost will be around 10 lakh rupees yeah and you are using only for hardly one month mm. if you are using to, uh, throughout the year not even throughout the year even at least uh, 200 days it is well and good but uh, the farmers will use is only during rainy season mm. the rains will be only for one month in a, in a year you yeah. just calculate 10 lakh rupees you had to uh, investing huge amount yeah and you had to get the returns also yeah here the problem lies another thing is the oil yeah. you require at least uh, 25 to 30 liters of the diesel is required mm. and there the farmer will tell why i have to spend around uh, yeah. 3 or 4000 rupees just for drying purpose yeah so what i understand is that like rate of investment like if it comes less then it will be a good product right or where yeah, comes yeah. yeah yeah but uh, you can sell it sir only in the places where the temperature is a problem that is mm -hmm. uh, if they at all there is no yeah, not uh, tried or something uh, yeah. uh, more than 20 25 degrees temperatures in such yeah. areas only you can sell it okay mm -hmm. okay sir thank you thank you very much okay, welcome sir hello ah uh, sir sir uh, good morning sir ah uh, good morning sir uh, sir can you share the this all ppt and post harvestment technologies consultant sir and uh, suppose uh, in what is the project is uh, available what is the subsidies available uh, what are the government involvement in this uh, sector so uh, each and everything will be shared on uh, our mail sir because of the latter we will, will be we discuss um, to other persons and companies sir sir subsidies everything you no know, it comes with the agriculture department people sir okay, okay no problem by any technical matter you can discuss with the, our scientists sir where okay. you are residing yeah we are from uh, karimnagar sir telangana district karimnagar means then you have to consider we, we want ah okay. yes sir we want the we want the post harvest technology yeah, like post harvest so technology so sir, any other so form mr Farm missionary also. Farm missionary Farm also. Farm missionary, sir. At uh, they are having at Rajendra Nagar. You may be knowing Hyderabad. Okay. In Hyderabad, they are having a Professor Jay Shankar Telangana State Agriculture University. Okay. Rajendra Nagar. I know, I know, sir. But any yeah. any private private consultant is there in in this sector? Private uh, means uh, there are some companies which are manufacturing, sir. Consultants, okay. I don't know. okay but if you I go to the fim scheme na no, farm implement machinery scheme is there at uh, rajendra nagar okay 
there uh, anyone is manufacturing the any farm implements first uh, they have to get approval they will be testing and they will be giving all the details and then only they can sell it in the market that is the farm implements machinery division okay at rajendranagar okay okay sir thank you sir welcome sir any more question any hello ah uh, sir i have one question sir actually okay. this is a wonderful section no doubt and value addition is more suitable for nowadays uh, sir when we go for the value addition training we prepare uh, avla murabba but uh -huh. i saw sir in the market the avla murabba which is available that color is in green green form only but when we prepare avla murabba at our uh, training sir after some times it becomes come uh, in a dark color sir it turns into a dark color what yeah, is yeah. the reason sir madam reason is that the temperature plays a important role because uh, we will be using a very high temperature okay even uh, maybe 40 or 50 degrees say if at all you are using any cabinet tray dryer the temperature we will be intending around 50 or 60 degrees temperatures but uh, uh, nowadays uh, they are you having uh, these uh, other dryers vacuum dryers where you can reduce the temperature to 10 degrees temperatures hmm huh? other one is the freeze dryers whatever the uh, you are telling in a very big companies they will be using the freezers okay uh, initially they will be keeping the material in the freezers reducing the temperature uh, temperature to minus 30 or minus 40 degrees temperatures and there they are having a separate dryers they are known as the freeze dryers automatically it will be it will be drying it instead of uh, converting the material Uh, to water water to any gas directly it will be removing the moisture content okay they are known as the freeze dryers if at all you are using the freeze dryer whatever the quality will be there say for example if you are drying any some uh, 5 mm material in other cab cabinet dryers if you are drying it it may come down to 3 mm or something like that okay that is the shrinkage will be there similarly the quality or the color it will be changing but in the case of the freeze dryers the quality will be maintained that is the same color will be maintained the volume will also maintain i hope that you might have understood that is the freeze dryers yes sir in the freeze dryer it is okay sir but i am speaking about that uh, murabba sir at to village level we tackle the farm women sir and there in such type of advanced machinery is are not available in that uh -huh. condition if we say them to prepare the murabba at household level for local uh -huh. to local the color uh -huh. of that murabba turns in a uh, brownish color sir what is the reason the, the drying aspect i told but i don't know they may yeah, be using i am speaking other. about the murabba sir not drying up aspect the value addition in avla yeah, value addition also finally uh, hello i have no, but I have no idea sir, it is not in dry form the murabba is in a uh, okay, uh, okay. moisture only sir mm -hmm. hello sir hello ah uh, please ha uh, this is dr koshik das from jalpaiguri ke vk jalpaiguri actually sir uh, from in uh, north bengal condition we have, we have a lot of mushroom farmer so they grow mushroom but uh, the main problem is uh, the drying so can you elaborate about the drying of mushroom or procedure or anything or value addition of mushroom western mushroom basically sir mushroom also you can dry it but when you will dry it no the problem is the color will be changed instead of white color it will be changed into a pale yellow color something like that there yes, sir yeah yeah there there if you could have a, a vacuum dryer or a freeze dryer then only you can maintain it sir sir actually uh, it that would be more costly in a pharmacy yeah, uh, yeah, yeah yeah pharmacy yeah but so if you want to maintain... technology would be there for actually they uh, they are doing sun drying only but uh -huh. in sun drying the color is what you are saying is the same the color is getting brownish and marketing yeah. also is other problem and the uh -huh. product also doesn't get dried properly so no, any another... technologies is there any farm for farm in farms level farmer level uh -huh. low cost it would be beneficial for them so that only another i have to know sir another method is the blanching only that is on the hot uh, water you had to dip it for a couple of minutes then you had to remove it then that particular uh, color will not change okay okay blanching blanching okay okay blanching just like turmeric yeah. what do you do in turmeric 
yeah anything blanching main thing is that uh, when you are drying it uh, the color will not change okay okay and sir kindly uh, kindly elaborate about zero energy cool chamber what will be the space between the two walls and what how much sand to put and what will be the size and anything like that uh, sir uh, that is uh, at least 2 uh, inches 2 inches gap you have to maintain sir okay between wall to wall and yes. don't use any cement okay. so in case that b could be a uh, space little space uh, in between little gap would be there so uh, if we will put sand and water ah. afterwards we will put that uh, sand will not get out from that uh, wall big gap wall no 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 you had to use the mud okay okay i, I understood that is uh, one brick to another brick how you will uh, attach yeah so yeah, yeah. Use only mud mud don't use okay. cement that's all okay 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 thank you sir ah welcome sir any other questions please madam last question from my side madam jagdish again yes sir please. tell me sir actually are uh, alternative for the vault what you call it as cook from cold storage you are uh, showing some uh, circular way what is that sir that is zero energy cool chamber ah uh, yes sir in zero, yes. zero energy cool chamber uh, what is the capacity of the cool chamber and cost of the chamber sir just i will show let us say shall we store paddy in that sir no 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 sir paddy you cannot store only fruits and vegetables only okay okay only fruits and vegetables only fruits sorry. and vegetables not paddy sir not this one sir not this one you are huh. saying that not cold storage you are regular storage for food grains food grains only oh food grains sir yeah food grains that is the silos sir yes sir silos sir. Silo, 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 silos silo. yeah very very big silos are required minimum cost of the silo sir minimum cost sir, of they, the silo sir they are very very big sir the fa the former i am not talking about this is the former level only okay. the industrial level for silo sir these are especially okay. in the case of the places where the temperature is very low say for example in the canada and the usa and all these places they are using this type and even in india okay. also this adani company all these people they are storing uh, this material in this type of silos okay the sir okay will come they will be dumping there they will be having the bucket elevators through bucket elevators the material will be carried from lower level to the higher level and just dumping inside and okay, you can okay. keep it for 6 uh, months or 8 months or 1 year like that periodically you have to send the cool air inside okay sir okay 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 thank you sir okay sir thank you thank you sir i have a question ma'am i have a question uh, sir do we have industrial gate centrifugation uh, Uh, available in telangana where we can use for commercial purpose higher and use which one madam industrial grade centrifugation centrifugation for what purpose you are asking uh, i want to um, separate uh, something you assume like a idli batter i want to separate it so i want a industrial grade uh, separator centrifuge madam that we had to search madam i have no idea about it yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, sir. You yeah. want to separate only idli batter? Yes, idli batter. Uh, I have a, a preparation which is similar to idli batter. Okay. Okay. I want uh, if I have to dry it, you know, it will take some. Dry it, or you have to remove the moisture content. Higher moisture content, you have to remove, and finally you have to get uh, some solid material. No, for me, the goal is nutritional loss should not be there. Less uh-huh. preservative will be achieved. Less uh, energy will be achieved. so if i do this centrifugation yeah, and yeah. Uh, then the lower superintendent can be used as a spray dried preparation and the huh. lower product can be put in in a tray and dried immediately uh, freeze drying would be the optimal where yeah. with less preservative we can achieve yeah. so in this concept i mean searching for my product i'm not able to find the machinery here uh, for running a test also mm mm-hmm. centrifugation you can do it because uh, uh, there will be a drum will be there with a number of holes you have to keep inside the particular drum and the drum will be rotated with a very high rpm uh-huh. and uh, 
uh, wherever small holes will be there through those small holes the water will be thrown away into another drum that uh, that doesn't work sir right the yeah. experiment did uh, many other thing hmm. that uh, the speed what that 4000 rpm and cool uh, temperature which we require we are mm. not able to achieve in i am searching searching such machineries anybody who can build for us that uh, as you are in hyderabad you can contact in some industry people madam okay sir thank you mm. sir thank you. okay any more question hello so if there are no questions shall we wind it up sir yeah so yeah once again a very good afternoon everyone we are delighted to have you all in the national webinar on emerging trends in post harvest technology and value addition in food processing which is the most requested and scheduled for the benefit of the audience firstly we'd like to thank Uh, chief guest for the today's uh, national webinar dr a vishnuvardhan reddy sir honorable vice chancellor angru and guest of honor dr l prashanti ma'am director of research angru also we'd like to thank the chairman for today's national webinar dr p rajshekar sir associate director of research arya aris tirupati we also would like to thank the guest speaker dr s kalimulla sir for accepting our request to deliver a lecture in this national webinar sir we thank you for the wonderful session and enlightening audience on the importance of post harvest technologies to address the most thriving problem in country that is post harvest losses and also keeping the meeting buzzing with your extraordinary information sir we also would like to thank dr t jyotirmayi ma'am from cftri the speaker for two session more on opportunities in food processing cftri technologies and emerging trends in food processing ma'am for accepting our request we are really look forward for tomorrow session we also would like to thank all the scientists and dignitaries from angru who participated in the national webinar uh, finally we would like to thank all the participants for your participation and uh, suggest all of you to join the tomorrow session as as well with the same zoom meeting link at form which is shared uh, for both the sessions separately which will enable us in sending you the participation certificates see you all tomorrow at 10 am this is lakshmi tulsi abm angru portion incubator shutting the meeting for today's session jai hind thank you ma'am thank you ma'am it's a wonderful section thank you all thank you ma'am